What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and in today's video we're cooking again and we're going in with the nightmare matchup for every UFC champion. That's right, in today's video I'm going to be telling you who is the nightmare matchup for each current UFC champion. There's 11 of them in the UFC right now. Uh, no, 10, sorry. 10 current uh, UFC champions, no women's bantamweight. But I'm going to be going through giving my nightmare matchup and then two others runner-up, second and third place, and giving my reasons. I'm also going to rank them on a scale from 1 to 10 based on how many times out of 10 I think they would beat the champion just to kind of demonstrate their threat level. And yeah, we're going to figure out which champions are the most vulnerable, you know. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, go follow my Patreon, which will be in the description to support the channel because I'm demonetized. And yeah, we'll get, we're going to get into it. So, the rating system, just before we get off really quickly, I'll be providing the top three Nightmare matchups for every champion in the UFC. First, talking about the Nightmare matchup, then mentioning other twos using a color code system, as well as uh, to show how dangerous they are. The scoring system will be ranked 0 to 10, uh, which... With each matchup score being based on how many times out of 10 I believe they would beat the champion slash how difficult they are, I'll provide my reasons why the stylistic matchup is a problem for the champion. So, let's get into it. Women's straw weight. The current champion, Zhang Wei Li, looks pretty unstoppable. Um, looked extremely dominant in her last fight against Lemos. Looked extremely dominant against Esparza when she won the belt. I believe her nightmare matchup is Tatiana Suarez, and I give her a 4 out of 10. I think this matchup is about 60-40 favoring Wei Li, but Tatiana Suarez presents a significant grappling threat. She's got great wrestling, dangerous submissions, and good cardio and tenacity to cause problems over 5 rounds. So, Suarez, I don't think she can compete with Wei Li in the striking, but I do believe her grappling could be problems for Zhang Wei Li. The next matchup is Yan Zhanan, who I give a 3.5 out of 10. She presents some threat on the feet. She's got uh, ext she's extremely fast, could potentially compete with Wei Li in terms of the speed. She's got some decent power and counters to potentially catch Zhang Wei Li if she ever rushes in, but her grappling is not the strongest part of her game by far. And she's not like a significant powerhouse. She did catch on Draj, but yeah, she's pretty quick, so she can definitely hold up to Whaley there. But apart from that, I just don't see many favors for her. And then Rose Namajunas, she has already beat Whaley twice, so you might think she should be higher. I don't know if she's competing at flyweight or strawweight anymore, we're not sure. But she has beat her already, so there is somewhat of a game plan set out. She's got great speed, decent takedowns, but she's potentially not big enough or physically strong enough to compete with Whaley now in the grappling, which is where she did have success in the rematch. And I doubt she would catch uh, Whaley with that same kind of high kick that she did in the first fight. But... Women's flyweight. The champion is Alexa Grasso. She won the belt earlier this year by submission and then drew uh, against Shevchenko in the rematch in her first title defense. She currently isn't slated to face anyone, but there are some kind of talks or some agreements with her and Zhang that they might want to fight each other. And so that is why Zhang Wei Li, in my opinion, is the nightmare matchup for... Um, for Alexa Grasso, look, in most divisions, pretty much, there's no other division where I'm going to be using someone else from another division as the nightmare matchup. Keep that in mind. But I'm only using Zhang Weili here because these two have actually, like, verbally talked about fighting each other. Zhang Weili, I give her a 7.5 out of 10. I think she's a nightmare matchup for Alexa Grasso. I think she can easily compete on the feet. She's a tech, better technical striker in my eyes. She's faster. She's more physical. Um... Better wrestling, better grappling, better submissions. I don't see where Alexa Grasso wins this fight, to be honest. So I think Zhang Weili is a major threat to Grasso if she were to move up. The next challenge is Alexa Grasso, 5.5 out of 10. She, Sorry, Erin Blanchfield to Alexa Grasso. Um, she's got an extreme wrestling threat, which we've seen people use against Grasso in the past, especially Shevchenko. Great pressure, cardio, and a submission threat. Blanchfield, she's currently booked to fight Manan Furo. I believe she's going to win that fight pretty comfortably, but Blanchfield's grappling, in my opinion, is superior to Shevchenko's, and Shevchenko had a lot of success with the takedowns against Grasso in both fights, so I think Blanchfield could secure something similar to that. But that's where I go to the next one, Valentina Shevchenko. I'm going to give her a 4.8 out of 10, just because... I don't believe that after these two fights, she's going to keep coming in as skilled. She was winning the first fight 2-1 to one before the submission. She arguably won the second fight, but I think she's only going to be going down. Um, she's been declining for a couple of years now since that Tyler Santos fight, and I just don't see her having the same success over and over again in the fights. It's kind of like Leon versus Usman now. In the second fight, Usman dominated, got finished late, 
And then in the second fight, Leon made the comebacks. This is what I think that would be like, but even further in the third fight. Um, so I think Shevchenko has a good chance. She's got the wrestling edge, can match the striking. Both fights have shown to be close. So if nothing changes, then regardless, she's still going to be close. But she is slightly declining, as I said. So I don't favor her. If they fought again, which I think they will, I would favor Alexa Grasso to win a decision. But the next division is men's flyweight. And the champion is Alessandro Pantoja. He won the belt this year against Brandon Moreno by decision and then defended against Brandon Royval in December. He's currently not got an opponent. It's pretty likely that he's going to fight the winner of Albazi versus Moreno. Um, Manel Cap's fighting this weekend. He is definitely a threat too, and that's where I'm going to go for the nightmare matchup. I believe Manel Cap at a 4.5 out of 10 is the nightmare matchup for. Alessandro Pantoja. He's extremely fast, great counter striker with power, so that causes Pantoja a lot of issues on the feet. Um, we've seen Pantoja as a guy that does get cracked a lot. Brandon Moreno in the second round definitely had some success on the feet. Uh, Brandon Royval, even in the fifth round, um, was kind of popping him up. His head movement's not the best. He kind of just tries to bum rush you. But Manel Cap's a great counter striker, so I could see him dropping Alessandro Pantoja. But he's also got decent get ups and scrambles. His grappling is his weakness, but he's still got some good grappling. So I wouldn't say that he's got no chance to compete there with Pantoja. But the striking is where he definitely poses a big threat. But the next matchup is Brandon Moreno. He's already lost to him three times. I'll give him a 4 out of 10 just because the fights are competitive. Like, that third fight shows that... And Brandon Moreno is not declining either, I don't believe. So, if they were to fight again, I think it's going to be relatively close. But I still think it goes the same way and he loses by decision again. He's a dangerous striker. He's got sweeps and scrambles. So, he can somewhat compete in the grappling. And he can do well in a war on the feet, which is Pantoja's kind of style of striking. But... Yeah, I just don't think... We've seen the fights already. It's like Holloway Volk. We've seen it. It doesn't... I don't think the the outcome changes that much again. But Amir Albazi is the uh, final matchup. I'll give him a 3 out of 10. He's got good wrestling to counter Pantoja's wrestling, so maybe he doesn't get taken down. But on the feet, like his striking is decent and he's pretty physically strong, but there's no way... He, he has success offensively grappling with Pantoja. I doubt that happens. And then on the feet, I think he would get outclassed because Pantoja is extremely quick. So, the next weight class is Bantamweight, and the current champion is Sean O'Malley. Look, I think O'Malley's got a bunch of hard fights in the division, so it was hard to pick out three, but it was pretty easy for me to pick out the number one, which is Corey Sandhagen. I give him a 7 out of 10. Corey Sandhagen, he's got the same dimensions, so he can avoid O'Malley's kind of range merchant style. He's not going to be stuck at bay trying to rush in like Eldrum and Sterling get countered. So, he's great. He doesn't overextend on his shots. His striking is elite. Got great read-making ability as well. So, I really doubt that... Um, Corey's got a pretty good chin too, so I, I highly doubt that we see O'Malley just catch uh, Corey off guard. Like, he's always in the right spot. His defense is phenomenal. So, I think on the feet... O'Malley's not going to have the same success just getting his hands going, which is what he needs to do to have success. Like, he really likes tuning, he likes finding his range, finding his rhythm, and then he can just land at will. But I doubt he does that against Corey. Also, Corey's got improved wrestling. He can mix things up. He can shoot the takedowns. His grappling's looking much improved. So I could see him even having success against O'Malley. Even the threat of the takedown could prevent O'Malley from being as fluid on the feet. Because in a pure kickboxing match, I would probably give the lean to O'Malley to win a decision. But I still think it's incredibly close. And we haven't seen him go five rounds either. Which I believe Corey would be able to do better in the fourth and fifth. But... The next matchup is Marab Dvalashvili. I give him a 6 out of 10. He brings a strong grappling threat. He's got suffocating pressure, inhumane cardio, and some awkward striking too. His takedowns, while like they are tenacious and he shoots them often, they're not the most effective. So I don't see him like taking down and holding down O'Malley for long periods of time. But O'Malley's not a super physically strong guy. I know that style of like that build does work for guys like Adesanya, usually for the takedown defense, but I think Marabu would definitely... This is why I've got it like 6 out of 10. I think it's a pretty even fight. I think I'd give the edge to Marabu more times than not. Um, the times O'Malley wins, he basically has to catch Marab coming in, because otherwise Marab's just going to push you back, and... O'Malley's a guy that like he likes kind of having his range a little bit. He's not he doesn't do super well when people are just in his face all the time. Like I know he's a good counter striker, so if Marab rushes in with his hands down, he can get countered with a straight right. But 
you saw with Pedion, Pedion's normally a guy that's really good at countering people, and Moab just kind of bum-rushed him and gave Jan no time to work or move or think about anything, and he won that fight 5-0. So I could see a similar thing happening against O'Malley. But yeah, Song Yudong is my final fight. I was contemplating to go with maybe a Cejudo, maybe an Uma even, like, and be like the Weasel, who's a rat, but... I realize that I don't um, I don't put unranked fighters with no ranked wins as nightmare matchups for the current champion because that's fucking retarded. Uh, so Song Yudong, um, he's a great fighter. He's fighting Peter Yan soon. I'm actually picking him to win that fight. He can mix in the takedowns pretty well, so he can definitely um, cause some issues there mixing the martial arts. He's explosive with quick, quick striking, and he's got some great power to put Sean down. Even Corey Sanagan, who's an amazing striker and pretty much a very similar striker to O'Malley, talked about how much difficulty he had with Song Yudong's style of just being awkwardly explosive and you're not knowing where he's going to go, when he's going to go, and he just, bam, explodes and then lands on your face. Pause. But we move on to the next division, and it's the featherweight division. Volkanovski has been a long-reigning champion for a while, but Taporia, he's booked to fight, and that's who his nightmare matchup is, in my opinion. But I give Tapuria a 5 out of 10 because I strongly believe this is a 50-50 fight. I was maybe thinking about doing like 4.8 for earlier Tapuria and because I do think Volk's going to get this one done. But tapuria has got a significant power threat. He's got elite boxing which can arguably match Volkanovski and he's also got strong grappling and jiu-jitsu. So he's pretty much, in my opinion, I think he's worse than Volkanovski everywhere. Let the record reflect that. But there is definitely an argument that he's slick. I, I could say he is potentially slicker and he's definitely got the power threat. And right now, the only one of them that's coming off a KO loss is Volkanovski four months ago. So if you take this fight and put it in fucking May, I tell you that Volk schools in 5-0 um, and just dominates him like he did to Holloway in the trilogy. But just the fact that I'm not so confident that if Taporia lands on the chin of Volk, he's going to take it as easily as he does. Like, he doesn't, like, the, his last fight where he fought just a really good power puncher in the hands was was Mendez a while ago. Tell me if I'm wrong there, but since then, who's he fought? Like, he fought Holloway's not, like, Holloway ain't that guy. I know he KO'd Zombie, he doesn't have that much power. Um, who else? Like, Ortega, Yair, you know their different skill sets. Islam, like, he's got some power, but that's a di completely different style. So, tapuria has got that same kind of weird, like, short, stocky build as Volk. I can see that causing him problems, but I do think Volk can mix in the takedowns effectively and leg kick him a lot, which is something tapuria gets done by. But also, the reason why I'm not putting tapuria higher than a 5 out of 10 is because we haven't seen him fight enough guys. He's fought Josh Emmett, who is also here as a low-risk matchup, but... Apart from that, it's Bryce Mitchell and Josh Emmett. And that's it. Jai Herbert, not a relevant win. Ryan Hall, couldn't mean less. Like, fucking hell. I'd beat Ryan Hall in a striking match. Um, but yeah, Tapoya, definitely a da dangerous fight. The next one is Volk uh, for Volkanovski is Max Holloway. I'll give him a 3 out of 10. We've seen this story before. We've seen how it goes three times. But Holloway does still, if you can somehow make adjustments, I doubt he wins, but he does have a granite chin. He's got great boxing and great cardio, so he can always stay in the fight somewhat. He's never going to get just dominated or completely drowned out and finished, but he's always going to be there, but I just don't see him winning. And then Josh Emmett, I'm going to give him a 1 out of 10, because I do believe this is the... F Even though there are probably guys that would have more success against Vulcan than Josh Emmett, he's the guy that truly has that potential to just land a fucking nuke on Volk's chin and just KO him. I know he got tuned up by Taporia, but any time Josh Emmett fights, he's got a chance of just punching someone in the face really hard and knocking them out. Like, it happens. So, I don't definitely don't think Emmett would beat Volk by any means, but he's got a one out. He's got that one-shot chance. Like, he can do it. Nuclear power, fast and explosive, and physically strong. So, maybe Volk doesn't dominate him on the ground. I don't know. But he would lose. The next division is lightweight, and we've got Islam Makachev as the current champion. He's apparently injured right now. Apparently not. We don't know. Dana said he's injured. Islam's fucking jumping off like buildings and doing skydiving and shit. So I don't think he's that injured. But uh, yeah, we'll see who he fights next. I don't think it'll be who I have as this nightmare matchup. But I'm going with Buenar St. Denise as the nightmare matchup. And you guys are going to fucking jump up my ass and tell me I'm being... I'm glazing like Lucas Tracy. But I genuinely... I don't agree with a lot of stuff Lucas Tracy says. I think a lot of his takes are terrible. But... That's one I do agree on, and I do think Bonar St. Denis is going to beat Dustin Poirier, and I do think he does have the potential to be a really difficult matchup for Islam. I'm giving him 4.5 out of 10. 
He's got power and explosiveness, unbreakable pressure, and great grappling. This guy is just like a force. Like, he's so difficult to deal with. We see it. Moises got crumbled, like, got folded by this guy. Bonfim got smoked. Uh, Favola got KO'd. Like, he just... He makes people do what they've never done. Like, he does people to think things that no one else have done to them. Like, who makes Favola run away from, like, a pocket exchange? Who makes... Who, like, dominates Moises on the ground and makes him look stupid? I know Bonfim's only fought once, but, like, he's doing things that don't often get done. And I think when he beats Dustin Poirier, and I do think he's going to do that... I think it's going to open people's eyes and he's going to really, like, people are going to see him as a really good threat to Islam. Not saying he wins, I'm giving him 4.5. I do think that matchup slightly favors Islam because he's better technically everywhere. But Bonar's just got that guy, he's just that guy that's not going to get dominated by anyone. I don't think so. Don't talk, don't tell me about Zaleski de Santos. Literally, that fight is irrelevant. It happened four years ago on short notice, debut, up a well to wait. Doesn't matter. But regardless, Charles Oliveira, 4 out of 10. He's 40 more ready. Um, but he does still have that style all the time to cause him problems. He's got elite grappling, diverse striking with power, and a good submission threat. So if Islam, he can't really shoot the doubles on Oliveira too comfortably, which we saw in the first fight. He got his takedown off the trip. And I, don't tell me takedowns. He, everyone thinks that Islam dominated Oliveira in the first fight and just took him down at will and smooshed him and everything. He took him down once. The other time in the first round, Oliveira pulled guard. Oliveira pulled guard early, got held down, fair enough, eventually got back up, swept him, uh, or um, got us, yeah, got back up, and then Islam got a, a nice judo, like a nice hip throw, so fair play, that was good. Um, but apart from that, and in the second round, he didn't get taken down. I know he dropped him on the feet, but that was Oliveira doing some dumb shit with a flying knee, which he shouldn't have done. But like, obviously, Islam was winning, but... I think there's a bad misconception that Islam just took Oliveira down at will and Oliveira had nothing for him. He had submission attempts, he almost got him, he landed some good up kicks. Like, he wasn't getting dominated on the ground. That's basically exactly how Oliveira versus Dayush went on the ground. He just got subbed once he was already rocked. So, I do think Oliveira would lose if they fought again, but he definitely has the dangerous style to beat him. Um, and Suyukin's the last matchup. I'm hearing guys saying that he's the nightmare matchup. He's the guy to beat Islam. I honestly think he's just not as good as Islam literally anywhere. Like, he has no attributes over Islam. He's got good counter-wrestling, good striking, and some unpredictable techniques. He's got decent kicks, and he's pretty quick. But where is he better than Islam? I'm just curious. Like, what's he going to do better than Islam? I don't even think he's more powerful. He's not a better offensive wrestler. He doesn't have better submissions, doesn't have better power, doesn't have a better chin. Like, what's he meant to do to Islam? I'm just confused. So, yeah. Uh, 3 out of 10, though, he can still... Like, we saw the first fight, and everyone's like, oh, that's ages ago. Armin's going to do so much better in the rematch. I don't think it is. I think he's got the skills where he isn't going to get dominated in any in that fight. Like, I think that style matchup allows him to not get dominated, but it doesn't allow him to win that much. So, I don't think he gets that one done, but regardless. The next uh, division is welterweight division. Shavkat Rukmanov, I believe, is the number one nightmare matchup for Leon Edwards. I'm giving him 5 out of 10. I think this is a 50-50 fight. Uh, I would pick Leon, though. So I, I don't want to put it as 5.1. I think that's kind of dumb because I do believe it's a 50-50 fight. Shavkat's got dangerous striking, clinch takedowns, and a submission threat, which is something that Leon doesn't often deal with. He's fought Colby and Usman recently as his grapplers, but... Shavkat brings a different kind of grappling. I don't think his offensive wrestling and his takedown game is as good as Colby and Usman, but his striking is definitely better in my eyes than both of them. But he does leave himself open a bit, so I can see Leon countering him. But yeah, still, great uh, competitive fight. Ian Gary, Cacciato, I'm going with uh, the second Nightmare matchup, I guess. 3 out of 10 for him. He's got the potential to match the striking. He's quick, and he puts combos together well, so... I don't think I think he would just lose a striking match to Edwards, and I could see Edwards even mixing in the takedowns. But he does have the style where, if it stays on the feet, he could just like have a close decision and lose three rounds to two, maybe. But Bilal Muhammad, remember the planes is going to be the last fight, the last match up here. I'll give him a three out of ten too. He's got explosive tendencies, if you know what I'm saying, especially in the airport. Uh, great cardio and a solid wrestling threat. I just don't think his striking is nearly as good, and I think we've seen Leon get back up from pretty much everyone, and I doubt it happens differently. But 
The middleweight division is where we go to next, and Sean Strickland defends his title in just over a week against Drikas Duplassi, and that's the man I have as the number one guy at a 5 out of 10. He's got extreme physical strength, awkward stand-up style, very good power, and he's dangerous everywhere with the finishing potential. He's got submissions, he's got knockout power, so he can definitely cause Strickland uh, issues. Not as technically good on the feet as him, but he's very strong. He can definitely get some takedowns early, but I do think he won't be able to compete as easily as the fight goes on with the cardio. And that's the same thing with my next guy, Hamzat Chemaev. Elite grappling, unstoppable first round surge and dangerous submissions but he gasses out and he really isn't that dangerous in the second third and fourth and fifth rounds which you haven't seen him in because imagine Hamzat against Usman in the fourth and fifth I don't think he's winning that fight but Hamzat I don't think anyone can stop this guy in the first round you're getting 10 8 by this guy in the first round I feel like that's just guaranteed to happen um but yeah, I don't think he has the success following that first round surge. So I think, uh, again, it's a 50-50. If you can stop him in the first, he wins, obviously. And if he gets out the first, I think anyone can beat this guy. But Robert Whitaker is the last guy, 4.5 out of 10. He's still very good despite the loss to Drickus Duplessis. And style-wise, he can do good things against Strickland. He's got great striking. Mixes in the takedowns, and he's got some dangerous combinations with some solid power as well. That one-two high kick I can see causing problems for Strickland because, you know, sometimes he brings his hands down for a certain combination. Like, if you can get his hands off center and land the high kick, that could be worries. But I think his blitz is get, get, would get figured out by Strickland, and I think he would lose a decision. But the next fight is, or the next um, division, sorry, is light heavyweight. And I've got Alex Pereira, obviously, with the championship. Uh, we're waiting to see. Apparently, he says he's got fight news soon by the looks of his Instagram. And I'm hoping it's going to be against this guy, Jamal Hill, who's my number one nightmare matchup with a 5 out of 10 score. I think this is a 50-50 fight. Um, Alex Pereira, look, he definitely has the power advantage, but Jamal Hill is also very powerful. He's super quick, and he's got great boxing. So... The kicks are definitely going to be an issue for Jamal Hill in this fight, but I can see Jamal causing him a lot of issues in the stand-up with the boxing. He's got great straight punches, great power, and I think he is quicker than Pereira, so he could cause him some problems on the feet. Um, but the next two, I don't think cause him that many problems on the feet, but they cause him problems on the ground. Margabad Uncle Live, I'm giving him a 4.5 out of 10. I think... He would cause Pereira a lot of trouble in the grappling. He's got great wrestling. He's pretty well-rounded on the feet even, so I don't think he would get absolutely destroyed, but his leg he would get leg kicked very badly. Uh, and he's also pretty quick, but I think the wrestling is where he has success here. We saw him hold down Jan Blahovic. We saw him, like, he's looked great in a lot of fights with the takedowns. And if he does commit to it early and doesn't be retarded and stand, he can definitely just hold down Pereira and be boring. But he just gets torched on the feet in my eyes. Like, I think most people do accept for Jamal Hill. But another guy that held down Jan Blahovic is Alexander Rakic, who's my next guy. Number f uh, four out of ten, I should say. Um, he's extremely big. Like, this guy is fucking huge for light heavyweight. He would probably be... He wouldn't have the reach advantage, but he would be, like, physically larger than Pereira, I believe. Um... So super strong, he's got good single leg trips and top control, and he's very explosive, he can kind of pop out of nowhere, he's very powerful as well, landing combinations like that high kick on Jimmy Manua, I think that's who he landed it on. But yeah, Rakic, we haven't seen him in a while, I'm curious to see him fight Yuri Pahaska, that'll definitely tell me more about a potential fight between him and uh, Pereira, and I want to see how he looks coming back after the injury. But we move on to the final division, and it's the heavyweight division. And of course, the nightmare matchup is Parker Porter, the GOAT. He's got a superior diet, pure athleticism, and unfathomable speed and power. Definitely the nightmare matchup. I'm kidding. Um, the, the, the nightmare matchup is obviously Tom Aspinall. 6 out of 10, I'm going to give him. I would favor him 6 times out of 10 in this fight. And all the John Jones cocaine riders can come and tell me I'm wrong, but... What did we, what did you see from John Jones to think he would beat Tom Aspinall? Like, cool. He took down Cyril Garn, who isn't good at wrestling, and he subbed him in two minutes. Like, sick. Garn's not a good grappler. Tom Aspinall is an amazing grappler, but he's also extremely fast, probably as fast as Garn. But unlike Garn, he actually has power on the end of the shots and doesn't take 40 shots to get a standing TKO which is literally the Garn specialty. He either needs back of the head shots if he's going to fully put you out, 
or he'll land 55 shots, including 17 body shots and 19 unanswered punches to the nose. Um, if he's going to even TKO, if, even if to get you wobbled, he literally needs to land 43 unanswered knees to the head to get you even wobbling slightly. And then he'll follow up with about 20 body shots, some hammer fists, some back of the head shots, and then maybe if he chins iffy, he'll go out cold. And if not, the referee will just step in for a standing TKO. So Garn, style wise, was never going to be a problem for John Jones. I don't know why people picked him. Um, but yeah. Aspinall, super fast, dangerous boxing, and great wrestling in BJJ to counter Jones. I don't think Jones is just going to fucking physically dominate this guy. Garn was like 245. Aspinall was like 260, and a big 262. He's like 6 foot 4, 6 foot 5. Won't have the reach advantage. That's something he could. Uh, but like, Pavlovich and Jones have the same reach. And look what he did to fucking Pavlovich. He just like... I th I picked Pavlovich in that fight. I'll be the first one to say it. I was wrong. I thought Pavlovich would catch him coming in with his chin up. But Aspen was went bub up and just fucking rocked him. And I think he would do the same thing to Jones. I know Jones has a great chin, but it's heavyweight. And Aspinall's got this weird thing. He's so quick and he's got thud on the end of the shots too. So I think Pavlovich is a more pure power puncher than Aspinall. But the speed and the... Like he just catches you. Bang. Like, like he just gets you and you're done. Like, it's just weird. So I think uh, Jones would lose this fight. And I think he knows it too, which is why it's not going to happen. Because if you look at his Twitter, I hate to say he's ducking a man, but he's he's quack quacking away. Like, he's not looking to fight Tom Aspinall. But the next guy is, I've been waffling, uh, Sergei Pavlovich. I'll give him a 4.5 out of 10. And again, people are going to be like, how could you say he even gets close? Obviously, Jones smokes him. I mean, Jones is not Tom Aspinall on the feet. So I... My thought on this matchup really doesn't change since before that fight. I've I've had no change in opinion. If you asked me before the Tom Aspinall Pavlovich fight, who would win between Pavlovich and Jones? I would say Jones probably gets it done with the grappling, but Pavlovich probably wins four out of ten times or four and a half out of ten times. He's he matches the reach, which will cause Jones a lot of problems. Super powerful and explosive. He's also very quick, not as quick as Aspinall or Garn, but. He's very big and strong too, so I can see him stuff in some of the takedowns. He'll be physically stronger than Jones, I believe, but we'll see. Or we won't see. It won't happen regardless, but I think he would definitely cause Jones some problems. And obviously, I said before, Parker Porter's the GOAT. He's the number one nightmare matchup. But that's the video, guys. I know I waffled a lot here, so I apologize for that, but thanks for watching. Like or else you have to listen to DDP laugh for 10 hours straight and you don't want that to happen. Subscribe, otherwise you have to fight the GOAT, Parker Porter. Leave a comment on who you believe is the nightmare matchup in every division. I'd love to uh, hear your thoughts. I know a lot of you are going to disagree with me, but you're wrong. I'm right. Follow my Patreon to support the channel because I'm demonetized and I make no money. The link is in the description. Please support me so I can... Buy UFC pay-per-views. And then follow my Instagram for more content. Left Lane MMA. Otherwise, you're going to get oiled up like Dana White. And then tune in this weekend for the UFC Fight Companion, Walker vs. Uncle Liev. Uh, it's also my birthday that day. So thanks for watching, everyone. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, everybody.